Hi, welcome back to part three of Introduction to Python. Um, I'm Thad, and let's get started. Okay, so I want to talk about um, using other people's code to start out with. Um, so we're going to talk about turtles. And sort of one of the advantages of using um, different languages is the um, libraries or APIs or um, modules that a, a language that provides for you that has already been programmed for you that you can just use. Um, so what we're going to use initially is um, a module called Turtles. Um, it's it's a very simple graphics pro, um, pro. It's a very simple graphics package that allows you to create a canvas and, and draw stuff on it. So let's, let's take a look at that. So as we get started, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the interpreter that we're going to be using the module. In this case, we're going to be using Turtle. So the command for this is import, and then the name of the module. So we're importing Turtle. Um, the second thing that we want to do is we want to create something to draw on. So we're going to create a screen. Now, a screen itself is a class, and that will be covered later in this tutorial series. And what we're doing is we're creating an object, which also will be covered in more depth later in this tutorial series, and we're calling it WN. So WN is the canvas that we're going to be drawing to. So we're doing pretty much the same thing with the turtle um, class. We're creating an, a turtle object and we're naming it Alex. So um, previously we've been using variables as things like numbers or strings, um, but now we're using it as a turtle. So Alex is a turtle. Um, now we're going to do some stuff with Alex, um, so let's take a look at that. Um, so Alex has appeared on the screen at the, at the center. Here and has moved forward, um, which goes up the x axis, 150 units, has turned left or counterclockwise, and gone forward 75 um, units to create this little bracket shape. Now, if, if we want to do more with Alex, we can. Um, if we want to complete the rectangle, we just need to figure out what we, what we want to do. So Alex will need to turn left again, 90 degrees. Then of course, because the opposite or the parallel um, line is 150, we need to go forward 150, turn left again. And then because the parallel now is 75 in length, we need to go forward 75 units. Now when we save that and we hit play, now Alex creates a full rectangle for us. Um, there are quite a lot of different things that you can do with turtles, um, and if you're wondering what those sorts of things are, you can go to the, um, the page within the documentation that will list all the methods and classes that are available within a module. Um, which will then give you the information of how to use it, what it does, um, and give you all, all that additional information. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to show you that you can do different things with the turtle module. So again, we've, we've imported, we've got our screen. Um, this time we have changed the color of the canvas that we're going to be painting on. Um, and now we've, we're creating a turtle called Tess. So just like Alex, um, we've created an object of a turtle um, named a Tess. Um, we're going to change Tess's color to hot pink, and we're going to change her pen size to 5. Now we're going to get Alex again and, and create a new Alex, um, because every time the, um, the script runs, it creates a new turtle. Um, we're just using the Alex name for sort of consistency. Now. Alex and Tess are two different objects of the same type, um, but they can be controlled differently and they can be told to do different things, even though they have the same um, power or the same ability to interact. Um, so let's see what this does. So as you can see, we've got our hot pink line here, which is Tess, and Tess first came along and drew us a triangle before running away. And then Alex came along and created um, the, the square. But you can see here that we've got a couple of things that we've done sort of um, identically as we've gone through the code. And 
what, what one of the big things about computer programs is is that they will take care of doing these iterative um, steps for us um, through different um, different commands. So what we want to talk about next is the for loop. Um, so the for loop is an iteration um, statement that allows us to go through and um, <coughs> redo things very similar um, over different steps. Um, so the for loop looks like this. So we've got for something in something, um, and then we um, have a semicolon, or sorry, a colon at the end, which says that this is a continued statement. And then we have to tab in um, one level to say that this is this belongs within the the, uh, the for loop. So for some variable i in range four, and what range does is it gives us a um, a list of all the numbers between zero and just before the one that we're listed. So we're going to have four. Um, we're going to have four variables within a list. This is equivalent to a list like this. Oh, sorry, that would be me messing up. Um, so that that is what what it looks like um, to the computer. Now, on each one of these steps, um, Alex is going to go forward 100, then he's going to turn left 90 degrees. So let's see what that does. So Alex has just gone and Alex has just gone and he's uh, created a square for us. Now we could do this um, any number of times that we wish to. And the other thing that we can do is we can um, change the range function so that if we wanted to start at 2 and run to 4, then we, we would um, start at 2 so we get um, 2 and 3 in our result. And we'd only have two steps to do, as you can see. Um, range is a very useful function. Um, it allows you to just create a quick um, count between what something to something else. Um, and I, I use range type functions very often when I'm programming. Um, so if now that we've met modules, uh, we might want to meet some other modules. Um, so we're, first we're going to start with math, um, then we're going to move on to random. Um, and modules are packages, as I said, with useful methods and values and classes within them. So let's take a look at that. So again, we've got our import statement. So this time we're importing math. Um, and now we have um, math.py and math.e. These are just um, numbers that the computer provides for you. If you remember in the previous um, video I said that the, com the computer doesn't understand a variable named pi unless you tell it uh, that it's 3.14, etc. Um, and it won't understand e, that's 2 point something, 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 something. Um, but if we import the math um, the math library, this has already set these values for us and we can just use them um, as, as we see fit. Now, math also um, allows us to um, ac access different um, methods. So if we want to get a factorial of uh, some number, then we can just uh, do math.factorial and it will come out and show us what it is. We can also take one of the math um, math methods. Uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, sine, and uh, we're going to feed it pi. So let, let's see what this does. So here we have pi. Here we have Euler's number. Here we have um, a factor of 5. And here we see the errors that are used um, that come from floating point numbers. So this is um, 10 to the minus 16 times 1.2, etc. Now that's almost zero. And we, we know that um, sine pi should equal zero, but it doesn't quite do it here. And this just shows that when you're using floating point numbers, the, the computer has to guess and it has to estimate, um, unless it's a perfect, uh, a perfect um, power of two or it's very small. Um, 
since pi is an irrational number, there's no way for the computer to be able to fully understand exactly what we're trying to say here, so it does the best that it can. So if we want to play with the random um, if we want to play the random module um, a mistake I almost there made there was naming my script file the name of the um, module that I wanted to use because it's named itself as as the um, as, as the same thing as the module. What happens is called shadowing, um, which is where the most local um, name becomes the most most important name. And of course, I typed that. There we go. So if we import random, that's going to give us a bunch of stuff that we can do. Now, one of the nice things about um, Eclipse is that if we type in the name of something, it will give us our, our options. Um, the other thing that we can do, once again, just like uh, we were looking at the turtles module, is we can do um, random Python. And we get the documentation for the procedure that, that we're using. Um, so important ones are our seed, um, which because computers work in a sequential fashion, they don't actually come up with true um, random numbers. They come up with uh, what are called pseudo random numbers, which to the human eye look random enough um, that we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, and the other one that we want to take a look at today is going to be rand int because we're going to want to generate some random integers. Um, so if we do print random dot rand int and then if we want to create um, a normal die roll um, we would say between one and six. Um, so what's going to happen now is random is going to give us that uh, random is going to import into the um, interpreter and at the point of import random sets its own seed and random def defaults to the seed of the current system time so every time you run it it's going to come up with a different seed um, if you need to go through and you need to um, have all the random numbers repeat at the same exact sequence as a previous run, then you can set the sequence to whatever number that you want to set. So then it's going to come down and it's going to access the random module, it's going to find the rand int um, method, and it's going to um, produce a number between 1 and 6. And this time we get three. However, if we rerun, we get four, two, six, 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 one, two, five. Um, so as you can see, each time we go through this, um, we're, we're going to get a different result. Now, if we combine this with our four, this time we're going to want um, six results, um, we can just say print random dot rand int one comma six. Save that. And now what's going to happen is we're going to import random. It's going to reset the seed to the current system time, which will be different than the last time I ran it. And then for some variable in range six, um, being 0 to 5, it's going to print um, a random number between 1 and 6 each time. So let's see that. As you can see, once again, it's gone through and given us our results. If we rerun this, it's going to give us a different set of results, as you can see. Um, and each time we do this, we're going to do something else. Um, one of the things I want to show you, now that I'm thinking about it with um, I, 
i stores the value of whatever's in range. So when we print this, it's going to print 0 to 5. Um, and it will do this every time we run it because the range isn't going to change. So if we change the range to um, 3 to 10, save and execute, it's going to print between 3 and 9 because it, it starts at and includes the lower bound and stops one short of the upper bound. Okay. Now we want to talk about functions. Okay, so a function is a reusable um, block of code. As with um, for an iteration, we want the computer to re reuse stuff um, a bunch of times and in different ways. A function um, allows us to place a, a set of code in one place and, and, and use that code from anywhere within the program. Um, this allows us to avoid bugs because um, if, if we're trying to update different, the same bit of code in different places within the program, we might make mistakes or we might forget one. Um, so instead we, we throw this all in, into the function code, um, which gives us a single place to debug and gives us a single place to, to do updates. Um, so let's see what a function looks like. Um, so let's say I want to Um, I want to have my um, my roll six dice at this um, every time I, I call this. Um, so what we do is we use the code word def, which is um, we're defining a new function. We're giving it a name, roll six. Now um, you have to avoid using names that are already used. Um, you also can only use um, underscores, capital letters lowercase letters and um, uh, numbers as part of the name. Um, you can't use a number as the beginning of the name, but you can use an underscore. Um, so we've, we've got a new, um, we've declared a new function, and we're going to put something into it. So we're going to say print random.randint1 to 6. Now, if I take this and I save it and I run it, nothing happens. Um, this is because I have to actually call the um, I actually have to call the function itself before it's going to do anything. So to call it, I'm just going to um, type the name of the function, add the brackets behind it, um, which is um, how we declare that it, it is in fact a function and that um, I wanted to do what it's doing. This time I'm just going to run it as as it is. So save that and run it. Um, and Okay. Right, self is for um, creating classes and um, you don't need that to create a function. Um, so this time it's only printed it once, um, so we can see down here that, that we've got it uh, as three. But we want what we want is for it to happen six times. So for i in range six, we want something to happen. So we shift that forward um, because each time we shift in a tab, it goes to the previous one. So at the first level, um, we have everything that belongs to roll six. At the second level, we have everything that belongs to the for loop. So once again, saving and running, we see our six random numbers. Now, if we had a bunch of other code, we could then, um, again, grab roll six, execute it again, and we've, we've got even more numbers. Um, as you can see, it goes off the bottom of the screen at the moment. Um, so commenting that out. Uh, the comment is, um, a sim uh, is the hash sign, which 
um, tells the computer that this is just for the humans to read and not in, in fact for the computer to do anything with. Um, so we don't want rule six anymore. So we can do all sorts of things that we want with um, with functions. So if we wanted to do a square function, now this time we we've defined our our function. We've called it square, and I've added something in here, which is the generic. What's going to become the name of the ver the value that I passed down into this. This is a new um, variable that only exists within the square function and I won't be able to access it from outside. Um, so I want to return um, x times x. And so when we come down here and we say um, print square 5, this will um, show us 25 as we expect. There. Now we can call functions from within functions. So if we want to um, if we wanted to instead take rule six and we wanted to have the the square of this, we could just wrap this into a square it, itself. So now what's happening here is we're calling the square function and we're going to feed it the random number that we're generating it. Um, it's going to come down here, it's going to multiply itself by itself, then it's going to come back up here and print it. Alright, let's see that. That was incorrect because I didn't say roll six. So you can see here we had a six here, we've got a one here, a three here, and three fives. <coughs> so that shows that we can call functions from within functions and everything's um, going to happen fine. The next thing we want to talk about is scope. Um, so scope is the idea of limiting um, what variables can be seen where. Um, so code, um, code blocks are used to limit um, what is, is available to anything else. Um, and the local variables inside the, the functions and the local variables inside the code blocks are not available outside of those, um, those containers. Um, so if I was to come down here and try and access x from square, this sh should give me an error. Yep, because x has not been defined. So now here, up here, we, we have x, but that only exists while it's in square. So we get rid of that. Um, also, square um, x does not exist within roll 6. And i itself doesn't exist anywhere outside of the for loop. So if I try and access i here, that is again going to give me an error. OK, so x doesn't, e x doesn't exist outside of square. Um, however, i is created here and will be available down here because it's already been set. But we don't need that. Oh, I should probably put a, a print on that. Print i. So this time we see that i has become 5 at the end um, because it's, it's um, maintaining the last um, digit of i. 
The other thing to remember is that a, um, a variable doesn't exist before it's been declared. So if we put that there, we're getting a big um, error that it's undefined at this point and won't be defined until later. Um, one of the things that uh, is common to many languages is the idea of the main function. So the main function um, forces um, scope into a script, and that's not what I wanted. Um, one moment, please. So we define main, and we start main here by saying we want to roll six. Then we want to square 100 and return. So return um, says that I, I want to pass back some form of information or no form of information, but I'm declaring that my function is complete. Um, then we call main and it will execute everything up back up um, through the order. So what's happening this time, since I forgot my print statement, print, there we go. So what's happening this time is um, first we import random, then it comes down to this line and uh, the computer uh, or the interpreter says, okay, that's a comment, I don't care about that, so I'm gonna ignore it. Then it comes to this line and it says, okay, well, this is defining a um, a function, so I'm just gonna remember what this function is called and skip down, pass the return to the next thing. All right, this is another function, so I'm gonna remember this, but I'm gonna ignore it until I actually need to. Again, here we've got uh, an additional function, this one called main, so I'm gonna store that in memory and get back to it later. Now, finally here, we're, we're starting the actual script itself, and we say we want main. So it's gonna say, okay, well, I know what main is. I know main is here. So let's see what's happening here. And then it's gonna come down here and say that um, I wanna do roll six. I know where roll six is, it's up here. So I'm gonna go through here. I know what four is, I know what range is. I know where square is, um, but I don't know what, and I know that square is here, but I can see that square takes um, some form of input. Um, so I'm gonna take that input and I'm going to go into the library, find the random method, um, generate the input, and then pass it down here, which I'm then gonna take, multiply by itself, and return that information back up to here, which will then be printed. At this point, since I've just done this six times, I'm going to return, um, but I'm passing no information back, which will put me here. Then I step into the next space. Um, I've got a print statement. I don't know what to print yet. I want to print a square with some input, which comes back up to here. Pass back 100 times 100. Print that. And finally, we return and we run out of script. Um, and you can see that this result is down here. Um, so, I believe that ends that part of the lecture. Yes. Um, okay, so the link to the book is in the description. I would like you to this week read the turtle chapter, the module chapter, and the function chapter, and do the exercises contained. Um, for the Oxford students that are watching this, um, I will be emailing you your homework, um, I, I will be emailing you your homework assignment, um, and that, um, will be to create a, um, a min-max meth, uh, a min-max function. So I want you to create a function that, um, will go through a list and then tell you which, um, which item is the least and another function which will tell you which item is the greatest. Um, and I will see you next week. Um, if you've got any questions or you've got any concerns, um, please leave a comment. I will get back to you. And like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.